Story recap here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror and thriller film called Do Not Reply. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Chelsea receives a video call from her best friend, Mia, who's been exchanging explicit photos with Dylan, a boy she likes. Chelsea worries that Dylan might show her photos to his friends, so Mia considers sending Dylan's photos to her in case he does her dirty. However, Chelsea wants nothing to do with it and insists that she needs to head to school. When Chelsea gets downstairs, she finds her mother already decorating for Halloween while her sister, Christina, is occupied with a phone call. Seeing this, Chelsea asks her mom if she could drive her to school because she doesn't want to get associated with her sister and her stuck-up elitist friends. However, her mom refuses and tells Chelsea to get along with her sister. After this, Christina drops the call and teases Chelsea when she notices that she's texting an anonymous boy named VR Cowboy. Chelsea refuses to discuss it and urges her sister to go. At school, Chelsea keeps on receiving texts from VR Cowboy, but she ignores him. She spots Mia talking to Dylan and Seth. And after they leave, Mia reveals that Dylan invited them to his house tonight. Despite Chelsea's hesitation, Mia asks her to keep Seth occupied while she and Dylan get busy. Although she hates the idea, Chelsea goes with Mia that evening. Mia ditches her for Dylan, leaving her in the living room with Seth. Once they're alone, Seth suddenly kisses her and places her hand on his crotch, but she quickly pulls away. The next day at school, Chelsea tells Mia that she ran home because of Seth's advances. Suddenly, Dylan shows up and starts making out with Mia, which leaves Chelsea no choice but to reply to VR Cowboy. VR Cowboy introduces himself as Brad and starts to flirt with her. However, the security guard appears and confiscates her phone. After school, Chelsea's mom picks her up and reprimands her for getting into trouble again. She punishes her by taking away her phone for a month. Because of this, Chelsea relentlessly tries to keep herself entertained without a phone at home. Fortunately, Mia visits her and hands her a spare phone. However, she discovers that Mia only did this because she used her as an alibi to go and see Dylan. This angers Chelsea, claiming that Mia now only cares about Dylan. Offended, Mia leaves. Chelsea logs into her account and continues her conversation with Brad. She rambles about how her life sucks and she has no one to talk to. Brad tells her that he'll listen to her so they should get to know each other. He talks about Chelsea's profile, where she claimed to be a cheerleader. To maintain her fake image, Chelsea enters Christina's room and takes pictures in her cheerleading uniform. Then she sends the photos to Brad, leading them to a video call. However, his face is blurry and he explains that his phone camera is broken. Three weeks later, Chelsea forms a deeper connection with Brad, so she suggests dating in real life, and Brad agrees. Just then, Chelsea hears a girl on his end, and he seems irritated at her. When she asks, Brad explains that it's Sadie, his sister. Continuing with their plans, Brad recommends meeting at a warehouse Halloween party, where she can dress as a zombie cheerleader and he'll be a zombie quarterback. Chelsea finds this fun, so she agrees. Halloween arrives and Chelsea tells her mother that she'll just stay home and pass candy along to trick-or-treaters. However, after everyone leaves, Chelsea goes to the venue and immediately meets Brad, whose face is covered in makeup and a football helmet. He hands her some alcohol and insists on finishing the whole bottle before they head out, so they don't get caught. Although she hesitates, Chelsea chugs the whole bottle and begins to feel hazy. With her being drunk, Brad leads her to his car, where he ties her up and covers her in the back seat. Before driving off, he destroys Chelsea's phone. Soon, Chelsea wakes up, chained in an eerie basement. Eventually, Brad arrives with her food and unties her hands. The next day, he enters the basement again and addresses Chelsea as Sadie. When Chelsea corrects him, he slaps her, insisting that she's Sadie now. Before leaving, he flips her plate over and the food splatters on the ground. Chelsea is too stunned to speak, so she keeps quiet until Brad leaves. Later, she finds comfort in the presence of a rat that eats her spilled food. When the rat leaves, Chelsea cries because it was the only thing that made her feel less alone. Later, Brad teases her with some water and she immediately drinks it. She assumes that he'll feed her too, but Brad asks her what her name is before giving the food. Sarcastically, Chelsea replies that she's Sadie. Brad is displeased with her attitude, so he drops the food in the dirt, which Chelsea eats anyway. As Brad leaves, he spots a rat dung around, so Chelsea later wakes up to a rat trap capturing the rodent. She mourns for the creature as it dies along with her hope. Eventually, someone turns the lights on and another cheerleader appears, introducing herself as Sadie. However, her real name is Megan. Megan unlocks her chains according to Brad's command, so Chelsea frantically escapes the basement but can't open the doors and windows. 
Megan eventually catches up to her and pins Chelsea to the wall, telling her to behave or they'll get into trouble. When she calms down, Megan orders her to rake the carpet to remove their footprints because everything must always be perfect and clean. Chelsea does as she's told until she spots Brad upstairs in his office, working on his computer. After this, Megan leads Chelsea into another room where they meet another cheerleader, Heather, who introduces herself as another Sadie. Heather asks for Chelsea's real name and she remains firm and says it's Sadie, pleasing them. Afterward, Heather leaves to bake a cake for Brad. With that, Megan commands Chelsea to strip down and clean herself up. When Chelsea asks for some privacy, she gets mad and forces her to get in the tub. After cleaning her up, Megan informs her that her hair needs to be bleached according to Brad's preference. During this, Brad puts on a headgear filled with cameras and starts waving around a knife as if stabbing someone with it. After getting her hair bleached, Chelsea hears crying and finds an injured Tina in the room opposite hers. Chelsea tries to help her, but she suddenly accuses her of backstabbing her. Meanwhile, Brad leaves his office and gets a piercing headache, leading him to recall the real Sadie who showed him her body while laughing at him. After snapping out of it, he goes to the kitchen and finds Heather baking a cake. He creeps up behind her and begins to touch her, asking if that's what she wants. With no choice, Heather says yes and he slams her head on the table. Shortly after, Heather goes to Chelsea's room, now with a bruise on her cheek. She helps her prepare for dinner, but Chelsea freaks out about how Tina needs a doctor. However, Heather insists that Brad would never take her to a hospital, so they have to nurse her back to health themselves. This angers Chelsea, asking if they've ever tried to get out, but Heather warns her that she already saw what happens if they try. Instead, Heather helps Chelsea put on makeup and tells her that they'll be able to have outside time. True enough, Brad allows Chelsea to have outside time, but this is only through a VR headpiece to give her the illusion of the outside world. Brad then ends their outside time and tells them to go to dinner. Before they do, Heather whispers to Chelsea that she should save some food for Tina because the leftovers are all she gets to eat. When Chelsea begins eating without Brad, she almost gets punished for it. The tension makes Chelsea cry, so she utters that she misses her mom. This prompts Brad to tell her that her dad was sent home early by the army to help look for her. He then congratulates Chelsea for finally gaining more attention than Christina. Hearing this makes Chelsea sob, but Brad gets angry, forcing her to compose herself. After dinner, Chelsea finds Heather packing her things. She says that she's been held captive for three years, but now that Brad thinks she's perfect, she's free to go. Suddenly, Brad appears to pick up Heather, saying that it's time for her final performance. After this, Chelsea feeds Tina and finally recognizes her as a missing girl she saw in the news. Downstairs, Brad prepares for Heather's final performance but gets another headache. This reminds him of when Sadie was born and his mother immediately favored his younger sister over him. Because of this, he said he wished she was never born so his mother slapped him and sent him to the basement. Brad finally returns to reality and tells Heather that her final performance will be quite different. However, he promises to set her free if she finishes it. They enter the basement and Heather warms up while Brad puts on the VR headpiece he made. When he tells Heather to start performing a cheer dance, she stops upon finding Brad holding a knife. Frightened, she tries to escape, but he cuts her in the arm. Heather argues that Brad thought she was perfect, and he agrees, but that was also why his mother always hated him. Because of this, Heather screams at him, saying she's not his sister. However, Brad gets mad and stabs her in the stomach. Still, Heather tries to fight back, but Brad overpowers her. She tries to escape again, but Brad corners her and stabs her again, saying that she always tried to hurt him. Finally, he cuts her throat and says that he'll watch her die over and over. After this, Brad goes to Chelsea's room and finds her sleeping. He hovers his hand over her body but can't bring himself to touch her. Instead, he places his head on Chelsea's chest and cries, waking her up. Chelsea freezes in fear as he stays over her, but he suddenly hears Sadie's voice in his head, so he leaves. Chelsea then covers herself with a blanket and shivers in terror. The following day, Megan talks to Chelsea through a hole in the wall between the rooms. Chelsea realizes that she has Stockholm Syndrome as Megan tells her to stay away from Brad because he's hers. Although Brad beats her sometimes, she still loves him nonetheless. At breakfast, Chelsea purposely uses all the ketchup. Brad gets mad at this, so he takes her food and tells her not to eat. This makes Megan laugh, but Brad gets annoyed by her, so he punishes them both by not letting them have any outside time for the day. Later on, Chelsea talks with Tina and discovers that Brad impregnated her. This was why she tried to escape, but Brad caught her. 
He beats her up and stabs her leg, which caused her miscarriage. Just then, Tina pleads with Chelsea to help kill herself through an overdose. She refuses and changes the girl's bandages instead. However, Chelsea realizes that Tina's wound is infected, making Tina hopeless about making it out alive. Finally, Chelsea agrees to help her in exchange for information on how to escape. Later that day, Chelsea cleans the living room and finds a picture of the real Sadie. However, Brad suddenly snatches it and warns her never to touch it again. After this, Chelsea goes back to her room. Suddenly, Tina calls her and says that Brad is mowing the backyard, so she should get the pills from his nightstand. Since their doors are locked, Tina instructs Chelsea on how to open them. When she succeeds, she immediately leaves and heads to Brad's room. There, Chelsea finds the pills along with Heather's necklace. Just then, she remembers to rake the carpet to remove her footprints. Finally, Chelsea reaches Tina's room but stops to go to Brad's office to ask for help through the internet. This proves useless and she can't get through without a password. Chelsea quickly leaves and tries to return while erasing her footprints on the carpet. Meanwhile, Brad finishes mowing and enters through the front door. Upstairs, Chelsea accidentally spills the pills on the floor, so she frantically picks them up and returns to Tina's room. However, Brad hears when she puts the lock back on, so he opens the door while Chelsea hides in their shared bathroom. Tina panics upon seeing him, so he gets annoyed and attempts to kill her. However, Chelsea enters the room and pleads with Brad to stop, so he chokes her. Seeing Tina crying, Chelsea asks Brad to let her kill the girl. Brad gets surprised, but he agrees as it'll be interesting to watch. When Chelsea approaches, Tina tells her that she's thankful it won't be Brad who kills her. With that, Chelsea stuffs a pillow on the girl's face, suffocating her to death. Brad gets amazed by this and immediately comforts Chelsea, who's panicking over what she's done. Realizing that he and Chelsea think alike, Brad trusts her enough to show her his work. He takes Chelsea to his office and shows her the video of Heather's death. She gets horrified by it, but acts thrilled to please Brad. Brad asks her how she should kill Megan, so she recommends that she should beat her to death. He's fascinated by the idea and wants to do it immediately, making Chelsea panic. Hoping to save Megan, she distracts Brad by seducing him. She tells him that he's perfect, which flatters Brad, making him fall in love with her. After this, he takes Chelsea to his room to make love. Afterward, he escorts her back to her room to let her sleep. Finally alone, Chelsea breaks down and cries herself to sleep. The next day, Chelsea tries to kill herself with the painkillers, which only leads to her throwing up. During breakfast, Brad keeps staring at her, which Megan notices. He then talks about testing a new VR camera, and Megan immediately volunteers. After this, Chelsea stands up to clean the table, and Brad caresses her arm. Megan sees this, so she intentionally bumps Chelsea in the kitchen. This stirs up a fight, so Brad tells Chelsea to take Megan to her room. Finally alone, Chelsea tells Megan that Brad is about to kill her. To prove this, she shows her Tina's corpse and adds that Brad killed Heather too. However, Megan is too blinded by her adoration, so she runs downstairs and rats her out to Brad. Brad gets mad, realizing that he can't trust any of them. He drags them back to their rooms and locks them in. Once Brad is away, Chelsea talks to Megan through the hole on the wall. She insists on working together before they get killed, but Megan still believes that Brad is innocent. Meanwhile, Brad goes to the basement to test his cameras. While he's out, Chelsea escapes through Tina's room and heads to Megan's to free her. Together, they go to Brad's office where Chelsea shows the footage of Heather's death. As Megan squirms at what she sees, Chelsea rummages through the drawers to find anything useful. However, she doesn't realize that Brad is already standing by the door. Suddenly, he yanks Megan back to her room. Then, he ties Chelsea up and drags her to the basement. Meanwhile, Megan cries as she listens to Chelsea's screams. Finally, she decides to help, so she breaks down their wall and escapes through Tina's room. In the basement, Brad is hurt upon realizing that everything Chelsea said was a lie. Because of this, he puts on his camera headpiece and prepares to kill her. Before he could do so, he experiences another headache and recalls his past. Years ago, Brad killed their mother so he could be with Sadie forever. However, Sadie killed herself to avoid staying with him. Meanwhile, Megan is in the kitchen, trying to open a locked drawer that contains the knives. When she finally gets it done, she grabs the biggest one and goes to save Chelsea. In the basement, Brad beats up Chelsea, just as she suggested last night. Chelsea fights back and throws a rock at him. Suddenly, Megan appears and tries to stab Brad, but he easily beats her up. After this, he attacks Chelsea again, but Megan gets up and stabs him in the back. Brad falls to the ground, allowing the girls to beat him up. With him weakened and injured, the girls take his keys and head to the front door. However, as they try to open it, Brad escapes and grabs Megan, choking her. Chelsea then takes the camera headgear and smashes Brad's face with it. The girls finally open the door and escape to the outside world. There, they ask for help from passerby and finally get to call their families. 
Months later, Chelsea goes to therapy though she doesn't open up to her therapist, since she refuses to relive what happened to her. Meanwhile, Brad is at an asylum where a bloody image of Sadie haunts him. Elsewhere, two 13-year-old girls agree to meet up with a stranger online. Thus, the string of crimes continues. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.